Okay. I guess we are live. I see there's a few people coming on. Hi, Susan. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. Let's see. I think I'm ready. I guess too bad if I'm not. <laughs> Hi, Renee. Hi, Patty. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Mary. Great. People are coming on. Hi, Carol. All right. We've got a little bit of ground to cover, as usual. Um, I'm making holiday ornaments today. Uh, I'm using a lot of different makers' uh, products. So um, I will be uh, showing you how to use some of those. Hi, Jackie. And let's see here. I'm going to turn the camera down. And hopefully I'm in the frame. Should be. Um, I've got a couple of new uh, Potter pancake dies this year that um, I thought were pretty fun, uh, like the cactus here and um, the narrow Christmas tree. I believe... The reindeer was available um, last year. I'm not certain, but but I'm pretty sure it was at least a year, maybe a little bit longer. But it's new to me. I didn't have it before. So uh, what I'm going to do today is kind of explain a little bit of uh, how I do the process and uh, a couple of different ways. I've used a rolling mill pattern uh, on a few of these here. And then these two here, I just used uh, texture stamps. So um, you can get a variety of different looks uh, with different uh, tools. You don't have to have all the bells and whistles, but um, you know you can achieve a lot of really cool things either way. Hi, Dawn. Oh, I see I'm pixelating pretty bad. I guess what else is new, right? All right, um, so on here, let me get my little pointer out here. On here, I used um, a rolling mill resources um, pattern. This is the snowflake pattern that I believe is new this year, uh, and I love it. I, um, I had to get more because I was making a lot of these pieces, but it textures... Uh, the copper really nicely. Hi, Monica. So I, I believe, yeah, I know I used, um, 22 gauge metal on these, but I think even using 20 would be maybe a little bit better. It'd be a little bit heavier. So, uh, you know, that's a, a choice that you have, you know, which metal you want to make. These aren't bad at 22 gauge, but I think, um, they would be a little bit more substantial using 20 gauge. So I took my plain copper sheet and my rolling mill texture and put those through the rolling mill. And that's how I got this pretty pattern transferred to the metal. Well, I can see that we're already interrupted, so um, I hope this doesn't continue because it's not only very badly pixelated, it is breaking up. So, yeah, you're right, Dawn. Facebook is reliable at being unreliable. 
Hmm. I just don't get it. You know, I, I don't know what the requirements are to, um, to produce a better quality demo. It, it is, is it on Facebook's end? Is it on my end? Is it on both? I don't know. But at any rate, um, I hope nothing was missed, but I was just showing that I transfer, transfer these beautiful rolling mill patterns um, on the copper. I'm back and I'm not back, so I don't know. Just bear with me, guys. Yeah, it, it's frozen here, too. This is frustrating, <laughs> to say the least. Are we back now, I hope? We're back? Okay. <laughs> Should do a little song and dance? I don't know. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm going to keep going. So I got the pattern, like I said, with the rolling mill resources um, texture. I love it. The snowflakes. Um, and I added... Um, a patina to uh, to a couple of these and I used the impress arts uh, patina pen for this and you just draw it on and then wait a minute to let it dry and then wipe it off so I will show you I'll demonstrate that too if uh, if we keep going. So, uh, Sony, I used um, 22 gauge on these particular ones, but I'm thinking that maybe um, a 20 gauge might be better. So, I mean, these are fine, but I think a, a 20 gauge would be a little bit more substantial. Debbie, I don't know if I should stop and come back. Um, I don't, I think I'll give it a few more minutes and see uh, if it straightens out. And if it continues to do this, I guess I just have to start this whole thing all over again. I hate to do that because it interrupts the video. Then I, you know, I don't know. I guess I'd start from the very beginning again. All right. Well, it looks like it's cooperating right now. Okay. So, like I said, these have, um, well, maybe I did. I'm discombobulated now. These have little washers that I riveted on uh, that I thought were kind of cute. And I'm going to be using um, a rivet tool. And I will be showing you uh, how I use that. And on this one, I just uh, stamped some uh, designs using uh, metal stamps. And I've got these tiny little stars that are, I believe it's called Starlight, that Mish Barlow makes at uh, Pragmatic Artisan. I love there. There's two little sizes, two sizes of these little stars uh, that are very cool. And then I use some other small design stamps to, uh, to fill in that area. And with the reindeer, I'm not sure if I like this uh, tchotchke that I put on here. This is a little bit big. Um, but you know, that's a design choice. You can do whatever you like. Um, and I used a patina pen also on this one. This was the, um, brown or maroon, uh, impress arts pen on that one for that patina. You can patina them or not. It's, it's totally up to you, whatever you like. Um, and then I got to thinking that um, you could easily put a date stamp on here or 
someone's name on uh, the design, you could either stamp it directly on the piece or you could make a little tag, which I thought was kind of cute um, that you could rivet on. Uh, so that's also another uh, design choice if you wanted to do something like that. So it's easy enough. All right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's as if they heard us, right? Um, yeah, Renee, I think they last fairly long. Um, the one I use the most is the green. That looks more, I don't know, more verdigree. It's not exactly, but, you know, more, it looks more like an antique patina. Um, what I normally do, and I guess I forgot about it, was um, when I do the verdigree pen, when I do the uh, Impress Arts pen, I usually put these in liver of sulfur first to patina them. Um, and then, you know, clean that off uh, or clean that up and then um, add a layer of the patina pen and then uh, sand that off, you know, the top layer to reveal the copper. I think that having that liver of sulfur on the background gives a richer look to this pen. So, uh, but that's just my take on it. So you can do it either way. But these I did not put in the liver of sulfur. And the um, the color just isn't as rich to me. So uh, where did I get the little star? From Mish Barlow uh, from the Pragmatic Artisan. She's here on Facebook. Um, she makes lovely, lovely stamps. And um, it was a set. I don't know if she still sells them that way or not. It was a large and a small star and then a very small uh, quarter moon. So that was, uh, uh, that's where you get them from. Okay, so when, for people that don't know what a pancake die is, uh, for their sake, I'm going to just give a little rundown on that. This is a pancake die, this metal, big honking piece of metal right here. And you put your sheet of copper inside in the, uh, in the design, and then you take it over to the rolling, or to the hydraulic press, and it pushes it down, and then the design pops out. You get your, your, tree or whatever it is and then your outline that that is usually well it is back here and then your pancake die your shape <clears throat> is there and then that pops out so it's it's kind of a, a very interesting concept it's a lot of fun uh, you can get lots of different shapes and make all kinds of fun stuff so that is what a pancake die is. It allows you to create many fun things. Um, and then you can see this is where I cut one of the reindeer out on a patterned piece of copper right there. This is one that was just on plain copper versus the textured copper. Okay. And the the little cactus are fun. Uh, these you can, like I said, I had put, I put one in the rolling mill and one that I just stamped, hand stamped, and um, I like them both. So this is, you know, I would embellish this with something. Um, probably more of the little rivet things like this, uh, just because I like those. And um, your uh, your designs, I mean, are, are whatever you come up with, you know, you can, you can do lots of fun things with, with these things. Okay. And with the rolling mill patterns like this, you can get quite a few pieces of metal run through these before they kind of uh, wear out. Um, I took 
the one that I did all of these pieces here, I did quite a few pieces before, uh, before it just wouldn't press well anymore. But I got a lot, a lot of stuff out of one pattern. And it probably would have lasted longer, but um, I was trying to get um, a deeper pattern and I set the rolling mill a little bit too tight uh, and I just kind of uh, annihilated it, but it was already pretty worn. But you get a lot of bang for your buck with the patterns, so um, that's it's a nice design choice. Okay, so... If you have any questions with any of this stuff, just let me know. Because not everybody's on the same page, and um, and I don't uh, want to skip anybody over. I know a lot of people that watch, a lot of you guys uh, know all about this stuff, so, um, you know, I, I don't want it to be boring for you either. Okay, so, I guess what I'll do, oh, I'll, I'll tell you some of the other stuff that I'm using. Um, I today am using a variety of hole punches. Let me put this to the side. Get these undone pieces. All right. So I'm using a rivet tool to place my rivets today. And the one that I bought many moons ago is by Crafted Findings. I've kind of written on here, so I, I have multiple of the knockoff ones made by the beadsmith. This is the easy rivet tool. This is the same it's the equivalent of this uh, Crafted Findings rivet tool. I broke this end and I didn't buy a replacement because this is the cutting, the piercing end, and I have so many um, two hole punches that have that same size that it just didn't seem um, worth it to me to spend that kind of money because these these parts are a lot more expensive than say the knockoff brand is so I kind of just let that go but it bugs me <laughs> that that part isn't there but it's just the the small end of the two hole punch then I have several of these that I set up um, my husband was trying to make this a long reach and the the metal kind of got messed up but it's very functional but he made it a long reach if if you decide that you want to buy one of these tools if you don't have one um this does as good a job as the crafted findings one does in my opinion however there are more attachments that you can buy with the crafted findings um and at the crafted Findings website is where I buy all my rivets, um, which I will have all that information in the resources for you. Um, but since I had uh, bought this, I don't know, probably 10 years ago, they've come out with what they call the long reach, the long reach rivet tool. And it is, it's cut deeper. So you can put your metal in further, you can reach further. With it on both ends it's it's deeper so if you were gonna buy a tool from crafted findings I would go for the long reach um, just because you have more access to get further into your metal okay just that keep that in mind there is with the easy rivet tool this is just the standard riveter on one end rivet placer on one end and the hole punch on the opposite end. This is in the 1 16th size. There is an attachment that you can buy, an add-on, uh, for 3 30 seconds. You can buy that separately. So that is available. But 
as far as rivets go, um, I would strongly uh, recommend you go to the Crafted Findings. It's called Metal Findings or MetalClayFindings.com. That is the website. It'll be in the handout, okay? Um, that's where you can get a, an assortment of different sizes of rivets and eyelets and any add-on tools that you wanted um, for your um, rivet tool. Crafted findings is sold by tool, yeah, Cool Tools does carry it as well. $83 is a pretty good price because if you go on the um, Crafted Findings site, it's uh, I think $98. So yeah, that's pretty darn good. So yeah, that's a good place to check that out. Thank you for that, Donna. Um, okay, so that's that. You can find these, if you're uh, inclined to buy one of these, you can find these on Amazon for a pretty good price. Um, I do have one, extra one, but, um, you know, if that's the kind that you want, you can get those on Amazon. All right. Then I'm just using a standard two-hole punch, mainly because of the 1 16th cutting end that is missing on this tool. Um, if you have larger pieces that you can't get into the center, then the Euro tool uh, hole punches are the way to go for that because you can reach areas that you can't reach with um, the standard two hole punches. So I don't believe I need this one today, but I'm just saying if you were making bigger larger pieces and you needed to get into the center, these will accommodate, you know, that space. Okay. Dawn is saying they do have sales. Watch for the go around their sales rotate. Okay, great. That's good to know. Thank you, Dawn. Hey, Jennifer. Okay. So that's the hole punches. Um, I'm also going to be using um, a couple of embossing hammers. I have, um, these are frets, but they don't have to be frets. They, they have some other uh, brands that are very good. Um, there is uh, Artisan's Mark is one of them. And, um, and I can't think of the other name right now. But there again, that'll be on the handout. Because I get on the spot when I'm doing these videos and then I forget things so the uh, the handout will have all that stuff that I forget the one that I like uh, a lot these two are the ones that are my favorite this gives you the little um, hammered like a deckel edge there yeah wubbers wubbers is one but I don't know if they call that wubbers or yeah wubbers has it and artisans mark and I think that's I think euro tool carries both of those brands but uh, yeah, okay, so I use the rounded one and then I use the straight edge one to make my lines with that. I love these two hammers and there's, um, there's comparable ones in those other two sets that I mentioned. You can buy them generally in uh, individually or you can buy them in a set. So it probably would be more cost effective if you bought the set, uh, but you would have to like and use the other uh, hammers that are in that set. Then I have a variety of uh, little metal stamps that I'm going to use. And I also have a, I think this is called a nail set that I got at Harbor Freight. And they make nice little circles. They're small, but they, uh, they're cute. They are the little circles that are in this tree. I don't know if you can see that close or not, but I just uh, hit it with that. I'm going to check here on the, uh, yeah, I think you can see those. And then I use that little straight line, this one here, for some random lines and then down at the bottom of the trunk. And then I've got Misha's little stamps here that I love, these two little starlight stamps. 
I think they're called starlight. It's either starlight or stardust, but I think it's starlight. Those are really cute. Okay, so where do I start? I'm confused. <laughs> Nothing abnormal there. All right. So I guess what I'll do, um, I'll do a tree. I guess I'll do a tree or a cactus, or maybe I'll do a tree and a cactus. Um, oh, let me show you some of the rivets too. This is, this is how I keep mine because that's a whole nother ball game when you start getting rivets and, and eyelets and washers and all that stuff. I have a, um, a little plastic box that I label uh, what they are and these are all rivets and they come in lots of different lengths. These particular ones are all 1 16th in diameter so that's the whole size of the hole punch that you need which is the size of the small hole punch on the two um, hole punch uh, little tool there but they come in different lengths and I've marked them because otherwise I would never I mean these are all fractions and you know I suck at math so uh, it, it's not it's not good so they come in all different lengths and it really just matters on how many layers of things how thick uh, the pieces you are making are so there are really long rivets that I rarely use but they're nice to have just in case you have a really thick piece okay and these are all hollow uh, the tubes are all hollow the ones that I use the most uh, in my work is the 1 16th or the 1 8th and 5 30 seconds I would say those are the ones that I use the most the 1 16th are the shortest they're very small and these are nice these are nice just for even if you're if you're not riveting something together if you just want that little look of something like a, a little i don't know little pop of different color these come in aluminum finish they come in copper finish and they come in brass finish so you can get them in three different colors um i've put these uh more as a decorative element these little short ones in a lot of pieces so they're they're pretty useful i like them a lot so that's the very shortest and then the one eighth and the five thirty seconds like i said are the ones that i use the most and it just depends on what I am making. Then I have another set in 330 seconds. It's all very confusing and if you go to buy the rivets um, from the crafted findings uh, let me know if you have questions uh, and I can walk you through some of the different sizes because you know nothing is cheap and um, you don't want to buy a lot of stuff that you can't use so um, I'll tell you at least for my experience what I use and what I like so uh, the tiny size Donna was the 1 16th so there um, you'd, you'd have to get on their website to see the different choices and stuff but um, I could probably, maybe not right now, but I could probably line some of them up on a piece of paper with their sizes, and then that way you could see um, how they differ. Um, SUNY, the ones I like the most, um, the ones that I like the most are the 1 16th, the 1 8th, 5 32nd, and I'm going to throw in 7 32nds too. Those are the ones that I use more than the others. 
okay and then I have an eyelet tool an add-on eyelet tool and I use it only comes in the 332nd so that is the one that I put at the top of a lot of my pieces I'll punch my hole with the larger end of the two hole punch this is the 332nd uh, size and then this little eyelet fits right in there and um, makes a nice finish there's my little rabbit um, I'll put those on a lot of my pieces right here to finish that off. I think it looks nice. Dawn is asking the colored thin metal that are star snowflakes. Could you rivet these on? Yes, I don't see why you couldn't. Um, the only thing that you have to consider is the hole size. And that will bring me to another point. Um, my little box of doodads here. These are lots of different things that I have accumulated over the years. This was one, this is one of the um, snowflakes that I put on the reindeer's butt but um i mean it's large i would have liked it if it was a little bit smaller i have no idea where i got these from um it's probably just an accumulation of little sample packs of different things um but i have i have lots of little bead caps uh in different colors um this is a bead cap that I really like. This is from Vintage. No, I, I don't, I take that back. That's not from Vintage. This is from Vintage. This is a floral bead cap that you can just flatten with a rawhide mallet. And then you can color them, you know, with that patina pen if you wanted to do something like that. Um, but yeah, there's lots of little things uh, that you can use. Oh, that's the same one I just had. Lots of little things that you can rivet on. The only thing is that you might need to enlarge the hole with your little two hole punch. You could do that. Uh, it's a little tricky, a little tedious, but it can certainly be done. If I can do it, you can too. Um, but yeah, there's, there's lots of things that you could rivet on. So you look at things differently when you start to realize that you can use, um, you know, different things. These are different washers. These, um, and I'll give you the name for that too. These are different washers that I used. Uh, let me put these back. These came from, where did these come from? Let me see here. I can never remember their name. And Oh, from microfasteners.com, which is also in your handout. So you don't have to really write it down. But these come in a variety of sizes uh, for washers. They're very handy for things. They also um, are good if you have an item, say if you wanted to attach an item whose hole is larger then your rivet. Um, I'll use this as an example, but this is probably not a great, a great thing to rivet because some of these things you have to be careful. This one's got a crack in it, so it's not going to get used. Some of these things you have to make sure that they're metal or they're not metalized plastic um, because they won't hold up. You know, if you go to to flatten a cap which is probably what I did here, uh, and it cracked, then that wasn't real metal, okay? So if I wanted to use this, though, and it has this large hole, the rivet would probably drop right through the hole. So using one of these little washers, uh, if you get the right metal color, and they also come in different colors, you could put one of these washers on both sides of this piece, and that'll hold your rivet in place. 
Okay. So that's washers and doodads. They come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. But I would say most of these were bead caps that were just flattened. Um, also what I like, and I mentioned this, I don't know, a couple of videos back, um, these little pinwheel discs, these I like to add to a lot of my riveted pieces as well. And these I believe I got from Beataholic or Beataholic. I'm not really sure how, how you say that, but um, they're, they're fun to rivet these in there too. So that's my little doodad box. You can also do like um, daisy spacers. I've got some daisy spacers and some little star spacers. Some of these have very small holes and you might have to file that out a little bit if you wanted to use that to get a rivet through there. So that's just another thought. All right. All right. Where do we get this fantastic handout? Well, I will, I always post uh, in the files uh, the link to get the handout. So you can always print a handout for my de demos, but I, I put it up there after the demo's over because sometimes I find that I need to add something or maybe take something out before I send it out to you guys. So, or make it available. So, um, that's the reason. All right. So there again, I have my washers, um, in little containers as well. I have them marked. I mark, mark the top and the bottoms of my little uh, containers so that we don't switch them up and then you get your sizes mixed up. So that's kind of a nice uh, tip to remember to do that. So there's lots of fun with those. All right. The enamel shapes and rivet. You mean to enamel riv or to add rivets to enamels? Um, yeah, you could probably do it. Is that what you mean, Don? You would have to have all your holes prepared before the enamel process. Uh, you would have to make sure that the, um, enamel hasn't filled the hole so that the rivet won't fit in there properly. But if it fits, then um, you can rivet, but you would go at it very cautiously and not over tighten because then you'll crack your enamel. But it's it is possible. Hi, Marianne. So, um, add enamel shapes with rivet to tree. Yeah, like I was just saying, I think I think it could be done. I haven't done that. Obviously, I haven't done that. Um, okay. But I have enameled on little parts and pieces. While the enamel's hot, just drop those pieces on there. And they, that's a whole nother ballgame. All right. There's so many things, so many things that you can do. It's uh, mind-boggling, but trying to keep all this stuff organized is really important. All right, so in making the tree, I am going to do one with the patina pen and the holes, just like, just like this tree. I'm going to do this one. So my first step in this would be to uh, decide where I'm going to put my, my little things. So I'm going to take my Sharpie marker and just kind of draw some little dots where I want to punch holes, where I want to put 
the ornaments. And then I will um, patina it after I make all the holes. All right, so that's enough of that. And I will take, oh, and I need to make uh, the hanging hole, which I'm going to put the eyelet on the top of that one. So for the very top one, I'm going to put a 332nd hole in there to accommodate the eyelet. You know, that's the thing, Marianne, it, it's like you kind of need all the toys. Uh, and, and I know not everybody can do that. You know, it, it's just um, cost prohibitive uh, for a lot of folks. Um, you know, and I can offer to make some of these shapes for you, but you still have to have a way to decorate them, you know, by rivets or... Uh, with the um, the texture hammers or metal stamps so you know there's there's um, there's a considerable amount amount of stuff that you need to make all the different things but I'll tell you if you if you have the interest um, a rolling mill is wonderful, and a hydraulic press, I think, is even more wonderful. So, um, you know, I, I do so many things using these pancake dies that I can't imagine not having one um, at this point. So, but you do what you can afford to do, and, you know, sometimes there are lesser uh, expensive options out there uh, or you know you just have to save up for a, a long while before you can get some of these other ones but if you sell your products that you make you'll be a, uh, amazed at how fast you can recoup uh, your investment um, I mean, everything that I have bought or that I, my tools and different things, um, it, my stuff, my product uh, has paid for all these things, but it's taken a number of years, but it has to be, I have to be able to pay for it out of either classes that I teach or uh, jewelry that I sell that kind of thing and uh, and I just kind of have always done it that way at first my husband was like you don't need all this stuff and you know that's probably true I don't need all the stuff but I wanted this stuff and uh, you know when he started to see me make money then he was kind of quiet about me spending and he realizes that it comes out of my um, maker's fund and not the household money because that that's a whole nother that would be a, a sore spot for sure but it hasn't happened overnight so it just takes time I know Kevin Potter will uh, put um, he does layaway for a lot of things too. I guess that wasn't the right hole size. I don't think that I just punched. Um, he'll do layaway on certain things too. And then there's the issue if you're from uh, overseas, you know, that that's another thing in the mix when you have to pay uh, freight, you know, for, for all these things to get to you. It, uh, it's kind of kind of maddening when you think about it, but it's the way it is. So I'm just kind of rapidly going through here, trying to get these in because I'm sure it's boring to watch this. 
that one hole is not the right size. And that's because I didn't take the time to check out what I was actually punching. Have to go back over that with this one. When you teach classes, um, you know, in different, uh, well, I, I did a lot of teaching in other people's stores or studios or whatever, and you, you have to bring all the things. Uh, I've accumulated quite a bit of stuff over the, over the years. Someday there will be a great de-stashing, but it's not going to be any time soon. But I've always had enough stuff for at least eight students, um, sometimes more, but um, when there's more students, then they have to share a little bit more, which can be frustrating too. Because I've always liked to provide all the stuff for my students rather than give them a supply list. Uh, because number one, you're sure that the right things are going to be uh, available or purchased. And um, number two is that before you take a class, you don't know if you're going to like to do that certain thing. So um, why spend the money on it if you don't know if you're going to like it or not? That's my theory anyway, but it doesn't always work out that way. All right, I'm going to leave that at that because I want to add that little, little plaque to this. All right, so I've got all my holes punched. I'm going to just clean off some of the marking that I didn't quite hit. All right, and then I'm going to take my oh, Impress Arts pen. And these have like a little ball bearing inside, so you want to make sure that you are shaking this stuff up good. Yeah, Tammy, that's that's how I've done it. I've, I, for a long time, I was just paying myself back, but then any time I would make um, a certain amount of uh, money, then um, then I'd buy myself something new, a new tool, new toy. This one is not. And some of these don't flow as well as others, um, and I don't know which I've you know, which ones I've had a long, here we go, this is much better, which ones I've had a long time and, or used a lot. But I generally will put two coats of this on. It dries pretty fast. But, I mean, it couldn't be any easier than this. If you wanted to wear gloves, you could, if you like to keep your hands nice and clean. Um, I just don't bother with that unless I'm working with harsh chemicals, and then I will put gloves on. All right. So you see, I just put the holes in. I didn't put the rivets in yet, but, but I wanted to get to this point to get this. The reason I do this with this patina pen is because I spray these with... Um, an acrylic gloss spray, which is on, where's the tree? Oh, which is on this tree. But I do that before I put all the rivets in because I don't want that gloss spray on the rivets. Although, saying that, I guess it really wouldn't make any difference. Um, maybe I'll do this one that way. I'll apply all the rivets and then spray the whole piece. The reason I do 
the spray on top of the, this patina pen is because I think it brings the color out uh, more so than just leaving it matte finish. So this is something you can play around with if you choose to do it uh, and, and draw your own conclusion, you know, of what you like. Maybe try it both ways or, you know, different ways to see what kind of finish you want on your piece. Okay. So you could probably heat it with a, a hair dryer just to dry it a little bit faster. But one thing I've noticed with these paint pens is that the longer you let it dry, the harder it is to remove uh, the excess that you don't, uh, that you, you know, that you want to take off. So these have to be primed as well. You have just push them down a little bit and then the, the color starts to flow out. And be sure your first coat is dry before you apply your second coat. Otherwise, you're just smearing uh, the color around and it not really getting that second coat. Okay. Jennifer says she wants a press so bad. I believe you, honey. I believe you. It is uh, a nice thing to have. It opens up your world a lot more, uh, your creative world a lot more. But all things in time. This is, uh, this has been an accumulation of over 20 years of doing this stuff. So, you know, it takes time. I couldn't get all the stuff uh, right away. And I didn't know if I wanted, I mean, I didn't even, I wasn't even aware of a lot of this stuff, you know, 20 years ago. So, um, you know, it's, it's just, I find it, it's like a constant progression, you know, of, of getting into different things. And it's a nice variety, um, I, I tend to be a little bit um, OCD and and all that stuff. And then I get bored. I get bored with certain things, and so I have to move along to something different all the time. And, um, you know, I think it's great the people that uh, find something, one type of technique, and they stick with it, and they get really good at it. But um, I, I get bored with stuff. I need to have uh, variety. Sunny, you got um, a hydraulic press at Home Depot? I didn't even know they had those there. I know Harbor Freight has some. And, and I've heard mixed reviews. You know, some people um, uh, really like theirs. Some, some are like, it's better than no press. Um, but I think it's like anything else. If it suits your needs, you know, for what you're doing, uh, and it's more economical, then I'd say go for it. Yeah, a hydraulic press, at least the one I have is a homemade job. Uh, uh, my girlfriend's husband made it for me. He never had made one before, and she kind of coerced him into <laughs> to making me one and um it was a one and done type of deal for him but he did a nice job but it's a small press it's it's not large at all but for my needs it's just fine if i had um uh, you know if i didn't have this small press i probably would go for a, a, a potter usa press um, I like their design. I, I like Kevin's stuff, you know, but not everybody can afford those things. So you buy what you can afford is my, my theory. All right. So 
I'd say that's pretty dry. And I'm going to use um, a flash shiner. Uh, these are handy for lots of different things. Um, but it has, it's a little nail block. It's like a salon block. Uh, and it's got two sides that have this. Um, the grits are all pretty fine. They're, they're really fine. They're meant for your nails. Um, and then they are, um, like I said, the two sides are gray that has a grit on it. The screen side is a very, it's even finer. And then this white side, well, it was white, is the shiner or the polisher, which uh, really um, makes a big difference on your metal. So I'm just going to take the gray side, the grit side, and I'm going to just start wiping away the excess that is on the raised part of the design. And what's left is what's in the recessed areas. So it makes short work of that. If you don't have one of these and you have a pro polish pad, this one's kind of beat up, you can also use that to wipe away that top layer, that top surface of the uh, patina pen. And when I clean that, I always make sure that, that I don't have any on the edges just to make a neater, neater job. And this, if I was going to uh, put the acrylic sealer on it, once I'm certain that this is all nice and dry, then I would go spray this and then let it dry, let it air dry, oh, maybe for an hour, and then I would go ahead and put the rivets in. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the rivets in now. And we'll see how that does uh, with the sealer added after the rivets. So for this, I'm going to use uh, some different washers. And I kind of just uh, just made it kind of a random. Want to? Yeah. All right. Oh, I've got some over here too. All right. So here's my rivet tool. Now you could add. You could make your own rivets. You could just use wire and make your own rivets. Uh, you don't have to do it this way. This just happens be, to be the way that I'm doing this demo. Um, I'm not making any money off of selling any of these products, you know, for these companies. Um, uh, it's not like I'm endorsing them for money. I'm endorsing them because I like them. Uh, and that's it. So... Yeah, Kathy, I totally, I totally agree. I have um, lots of different things going on at the same time. Um, you know, I buy these food trays. They're like cafeteria trays, plastic trays. I've, I've had those for like forever. Well, not forever, but since I've been doing this. When, when I had my shop and I was uh, doing classes, everybody would work on one of these trays. If we were doing bead work, especially. I'd have the, the cafeteria tray and then I'd put a bead mat on top and then all their stuff. And then that way it was all contained. The beads didn't go rolling anywhere. Um, but I primarily use them nowadays for projects that I have in the works. You know, I may get an idea uh, and I can't really get to it, but I might fix myself a tray like so and put a few of those things on there and then you know, add it to another, you know, I can stack them. So I have different works in different stages, um, so to say, you know, I, I just get too many thoughts sometimes. And, and that's how I deal with it. I just keep them, keep them stacked on those little trays. All right, now I'm going to take my eyelet, my, for the hanging hole. Do you have to put an eyelet on the top? No, you don't. 
Um, I, I have them and I like how they look, so I use them, but you don't have to do that. Um, all right, so then I have a tool ready to go with the eyelet um, little piece in there. And this, what it does is you lay the bottom part of this tool there's like a little seat with a little depression in here and you put your and this part of the tool has like a little nub that fits into the hollow tube and then you just twist it down and I bent my tip because that's very very um, thin at the top. Normally you don't have to hit that, but I'm just straightening that out. So that placed the rivet, I mean the eyelet. That's what I should, I didn't need to hit it, hit it. But it's at a very tapered point, so it's not my finest placement, but you get the idea, the rivet. The eyelet hold is in there. You know, Re Renee makes a very interesting point, and that is very true uh, in in most areas. That she's saying that um, she was told when you make jewelry, you need to stick with one kind in order to brand yourself. But that doesn't work for me. Everything interests me, so I try it all. That's exactly me. But I have noticed when I do shows, um, I have so many different things out there. It's hard for people to take that all in at one time. There's so many different techniques. And I think, like, if you're in a show that has a judging, you know, they judge and have awards, um, I think you hurt yourself. This is my opinion, but I think you hurt yourself the more variety you have on that table. I think the judges are looking for a consistency and a quality in a certain technique. Um, and, you know, and I've accepted that. I, I, I'm sure, you know, that 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 um, I'm sure that that's true in branding yourself like that. But you know, I'm doing what I love to do. And if it's all scattered and all over the place, I'm okay with that because I don't think I would be pursuing this as much as if I just stuck with one thing, because like I said before, I think I would get bored with it and it wouldn't be special to me anymore. That's just my, my theory. So, okay. So I used my eyelet. But you guys, you know, I mean, everybody should do what they love to do. And, and I'm pretty much doing it. Sometimes I make money, sometimes I don't. That's okay, because I'm doing what I like. All right. All right, so I'm going to stack a couple of these just because I think they look more interesting. I took a larger washer and um, in copper, and then I took one in brass, and then I'm going to get a one sixteenth and put that through. This is where you have to have pretty nimble fingers. Um, and I drop a lot of these. Now, this is where I'm going to check my length. Now, this 1 16th is a little bit too short. I want to have a little bit more. I don't know if you can see that, but there's it just barely makes it through the, the copper. That's not good. You have to have something, some metal, to be able to grab onto with the tool. All right, so I'm going to put that 1 16th back. 
And then I'm going to, where did I put them? Then I'm going to grab Hello, where did I put you? Just bear with me a second here. Then I guess I will get the 530 seconds would be the next up. Unless no, this is what I want. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I I just confused myself. I don't know if I put the same one back in the box and I'm grabbing the same one again, but I'll soon find out. Yeah, this one's better. This is the one eighth. Okay, so I've got the rivet, a little brass washer, and a little copper washer. And I'm going to get my rivet tool. And on this rivet tool, I don't know how well you can see this. I'm going to try to show you. This has... These little parts are interchangeable. You take out this screw and you can pull this thing out and you put a different attachment in it. But this is the rivet attachment that's on here right now. And it has a depression in, in here. And that's where the head of the rivet lays. And then on the opposite side of this lever or whatever you want to call that, it has a little nub that will fit into the hollow area of the tube, okay? So to keep this all in place, I'm going to put my tool upside down so that the rivet head can rest on that little pad. And then I make sure that I've caught that little nub into the hollow part of the rivet. And I just twist it until this is seated sometimes I do this better than others I don't know why it's really not difficult okay so that placed the rivet. It's nice and smooth on the reverse side. There's no, nothing sharp on the back side. Okay. And, you know, you can build it however you want. You know, I mean, you can put little different doodads in there if you want. I kind of just like the way that the washers look. Uh, but you could just put plain rivets in here, too, like the shortest one. You could put just, that's the 1 16th size. You could just put that in by itself and not even put a washer on there if you wanted to. You know, you could just put the washer. That's what these little short ones are. To me, they're good for that. And I think I'll do that with this, just, just for the hell of it. It, it just, it couldn't be any easier to uh, place rivets than this. Nice and smooth. You can overpress too, though, so you have to be careful. Um, you can make little marks in the rivet head if you are just really pressing too hard. So you just, it's something that you just have to play around with. 
All right. So now I guess now I'll just put a small copper one on. And you can interchange your metals if you want. You could do that. You could make them different combinations of colors. But, you know, you could also attach those like little stars or little daisy spacers uh, on there. Oh, that's the one that's too short. It's really easy to get these mixed up. So um, use care when you're um, when you have all your stuff out that you're not getting it mixed up. And you don't want your rivet to be too long either because then it's going to get smushed and um, not lay real well. Or you could maybe even get sharp pieces. All right. So let's see here. I think that I shouldn't probably do this whole thing uh, for the demo because it would probably take too long. But what I do want to do on this one, I mean, you get the gist of me putting the washers in and how I'm doing the rivets. But I think what I want to do on this particular one is attach this little um, year plaque on here. Okay, so what I want to do on this, I'm going to do, do this part and then I'll do one uh, with the stamping just so you can see that. All right, so I'm going to put my two little holes in here for the plaque. It'd be real cute with somebody's, you know, with kids' names on them and stuff, too, if you wanted to do that. I'll just rivet this on, or uh, put this on, and then... And then we'll move on to... Maybe the cactus. I think we'll do a cactus. Rose, I have bought the little doodads a variety of places. Um, some of them have been sample packs that came along with an order. Um, and you know, it's just an accumulation that I've gotten over the years. So uh, some of them are vintage elements. Some of them are none designs uh, elements. Uh, I, I can't really say offhand where, but a lot of them are bead caps just flattened out. Sometimes you get little, I know for a fact, uh, when I was up at Bead and Button, um, Nun Designs always gave, uh, when I taught classes up there, um, Nun Designs always gave my students a little uh, take-home bag of um, little doodads. So that's where some of them are from. Why isn't this going through? I used the right hole. Sometimes I can't explain. It worked fine for the others. It should work fine for this. But sometimes I'll just use my awl to uh, stretch out the hole a little bit. 
Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But I'll tell you, I feel like a real Butterfingers with these little tiny things. So I've got one rivet in. I'll put this on here. Wrong end. You need the end with the lever. The, um, this is the rivet, rivet tool that I'm using, Linda. It's, um, it's the one from, <laughs> I kind of put a rivet in there. Um, it's the one from Crafted Findings, um, that I'm using right now. Could you imagine if you had long nails and you were trying to do this? I can't do it with short nails. All right. All right, so that just helps seat that rivet. Ow. All right. So now I have my little year plaque on here. It might be slightly crooked. Not, not bad, though. Has that on there. Okay. So I would just continue on putting the rest of my rivets on here. And uh, I may or may not spray that one. I don't know. I don't know. But I kind of like it with the name, with the ear on there. I think that looks kind of nice. All right. So now for the. Cactus. You know, when you punch these with the um, pancake die, there's a little tab, little metal tab that you have to uh, cut off or sand off. Uh, and then you want to make sure you smoothed all your edges uh, on your piece. That's easy enough to do. And then, let's see here. Then I'm going to use this where's my sample one i'm going to use this uh hammer that has the two flat lines one is just slightly thinner than the other end not much just slightly excuse me i'm going to take the uh flatter or the skinnier end and i'm just going to give it some wax just some random random wax just to kind of give a cactus you know how the cactus the saguaro cactuses have they look like lines coming down um, just to kind of give that effect You don't have to put a ton, I guess, whatever appeals to you. And then when you're hitting that, it kind of deforms your oh, metal a little bit, kind of takes it out of shape. I bought this um, rawhide mallet recently. I never had a weighted one. Uh, it's got lead weight inside of it, and somebody recommended that uh, that I try one because... The other mallets are, are pretty lightweight, and these come in different sizes. 
and I wasn't certain which one to get. Uh, and I got the smaller one uh, of the sizes. I think there were three different sizes. And uh, I really like this one. It, it feels good. It's got some heft to it, but yet it's not so um, heavy that it would make my hand tired when I use it. But that helps flatten out stuff. All right, so I've got my little lines on here. And now I'm going to take... There are some pretty cool little stamps out there. This one, this one is from Beeducation that I got some time ago, and it's like a little, um, I don't know what it is. It, it's like a, it looks like kind of like a plus sign, but it's a little fancier than that. Maybe it's like a little four point star. I'm not really certain what this one is called, but it's perfect for the cactus. At least to me, it's perfect. Uh, then I'm going to take a standard hammer, and I'm just going to place some of these little marks in here that kind of look like the little spines, the, the prickly part of the cactus. And just kind of randomly put them around. Oh, I have to put my hanging hole in here, too. You can put as many or as few of these as you want, or you could use a different kind of stamp. I just thought that this looked more like the things you see, those little stickery things, those painful things that are on cactus, cacti. Flatten that back up. I'm going to punch my hanging hole wherever my two hole. Here it is. All right, so I punched my hanging hole for the eyelet. So that's a 332nd hole. And I'm going to grab my piece of paper here, paper towel, and I'm going to take the black Impress Arts patina pen. And I'm going to coat this whole thing. I want to make sure that the ink goes into all those little recesses. You could do this also with a black Sharpie marker. This is quicker though, uh, because it has a larger nib on the end that delivers the juice. These have to be primed as well. All these markers have that ball bearing inside. But you want to press down a little bit to make sure that you get it all in the, the recesses of the stamping and the texture tool. All right, so that's that. These also come with, um, you see I pretty much annihilated the tip on this, but it's still working fine for what I need it to do but they all come with a replacement nib in here too because of this purpose. If I wanted to use this pen for something finer, 
with this being obliterated here, probably wouldn't give me, um, you know, the ability to do that. So I would just pull that out and put the other nib in. So that's kind of a nice thing. All right. So let's see here. We just have two th more things to do and then we'll be done. And that is just cleaning this up and then putting the um, the eyelet in the top of this. It dries pretty quickly. And like I said, the longer you wait, the harder it is to remove. So I'm taking the bulk of this off with my Pro Polish pad, but I could have used the other nail block too, the flash shiner. But I don't want to crud those up as as uh, quickly because they cost a little bit more. I think they're like four dollars a block. I think that's what they are on Amazon, and. Uh, These are cheaper. The pros polish pads are cheaper to use. I'm I'm not all about the money or the cheapness or the expense. Uh, I'm just the practicality is uh, a major major uh, focus for me when I'm doing stuff. All right, so I'm just gonna go over this a little bit, and then I'm gonna use the shiner part which it's really amazing how this uh, shines your metal up it, it really it's amazing all right where's that rivet or the eyelet eyelet where did you go here it is I really like the idea of this um, cactus as an ornament. I think that's very cool. Not everybody celebrates Christmas, um, and and that's that's just fine by me. Uh, but it's nice to see some different choices available, and uh, this has got a nice little Southwest vibe to it. And you could uh, use this for any season. Okay, place that eyelet. And there you go. Bob's your uncle. So that's pretty fun. You can hang a ribbon or a chain or put it in your rear view mirror. Maybe not. Maybe the shine would be too much. Maybe that would be a distraction. But this uh, flash shiner, like I said before, is pretty pretty cool. Or you could put this in liver of sulfur, you know, and, and antique the whole piece. This just doing it this way just accentuates, you know, the the uh, the stamping marks that are on here. So that's kind of cool. I like to put those uh, large um, jump rings. They're actually not jump rings. They're actually chain links from an oval copper chain. I, I've mentioned these before on other demos that I do. I buy a roll of copper chain and uh, they're oval links and I use these a lot for hanging hanging things and then you can put your ribbon through there or your chain or whatever you wanted to do. So those are just some suggestions uh, on how to use these pancake dies. Um, last year um, I had done some holiday ornaments that were, they look like an ornament, like a actual ornament. Um, if you look back on my demos, you know, last year uh, around this time I had one. 
on there. And, you know, Potter makes a lot of different nice holiday um, pancake dyes. So each year he seems like he has something new and that's kind of fun to add uh, to the collection of pancake dyes. So uh, I think that's it for this. See, there's this one with the patina on it. And this one with the lines on it or the stamping marks on it. Different look. They're all fun. All right. Um, if you have any questions on this, oh, 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 I forgot. One other thing that I like to do, I'm going to, I'm, I'm not stopping yet, almost. Um, one thing that I think is fun to do, um, and I'm going to do it on the cactus here, is I'm going to use the embossing hammer to deckle the edges. And by that, I mean you take the, the ball end of your hammer and go around the very edge of your piece and make sure you turn it so that you're, it's, you're facing the right area that you're working on because it's too easy to get off course and then actually hammer into the design. You don't want to do that. You want to stay right on the edge. Some of these little twists and turns are a little bit uh, more difficult to be precise in. Maybe I should use the smaller end. Anyway, you get the idea. I did it on this one all the way around where I just deckled that edge. I see we were just connected there for a while. All right, so like I was saying that this just takes, makes a nice sparkly edge that just gives it a nicer finish on the end. And I see that we're getting disconnected and pixelated pretty badly right now. So hopefully you got enough out of this that you could actually see um, the finished product. Okay, so next week, next week I've got the uh, Kumihimo bracelet uh, holiday one that we're going to do. Um, so that's going to be a, like a class. It's a demo class, whatever you want to say. Um, everybody should have gotten their kits by now, except two people, which they were mailed today, so they'll have them in time. Um, uh, I do still have kits if anybody wants them, um, but you should get them. Uh, I mean, we'll be doing that next Tuesday. And then the following Tuesday, uh, we're going to do enamels again. And I've had some interest in that. And we're going to do some enamels with little florals, little floral wafers attached. To them and here's the little bunny that I showed yesterday in the group we're gonna do that and then we're gonna do a few uh, holiday ones like that these are colored decals these these two are colored decals I had done a, a decal on enamel demo some months back and um, I just used the black regular enamels, but this, these are the colored ones. These are a little bit trickier than firing on the, um, the regular ones. Here's a little snowman one too. 
these are very easy to to uh, screw up you know you can over fire them and and mess up the color uh, but we're gonna do some of these a, a little smattering of different different things the decals um, I got from expressions decals on Etsy it's it starts with an X not an EX expressions decals and um, I would I would if I were you I would wait till I do the demo I ordered some other um, you know uh, an, some other water slide decals last night and I'm hoping to get them in and test them out before we do the demo because I want you to buy the right ones they give you a choice of glass or ceramic um, uh, you know for glass or for ceramic decals that you purchase and I've been buying the glass since enamel is glass um, but I was having a lot of trouble um, getting the color to come out really well so I ordered a sheet of the decals for ceramic and I'm gonna try those so that's why you know yesterday when I posted the picture of the bunny uh, I had edited my post and said, you know, if you could wait to get your stuff before, um, till after I do the class or after I do my experiment, my test with it, that way I can tell you the right ones to get. I don't, I don't want you to get one kind and then find out that I should have told you the other kind. That's my theory on that. Uh, yes, they can be used with a torch. You don't have to have a kiln. Um, so in the meantime, you can look at them. You know, you could look at and, and see what they carry. I've had um, certain colors that didn't show up quite well on some of my pieces. Now, whether that was my error or if it's just the nature of the decal, I can't really say for sure. Um, but I would like to give you the accurate information before you buy the stuff. Because uh, then you'll be ticked off at me for telling you wrong. Um, Sony, the copper chain I've been getting from the beadsmith I have an account with them and I was able to get it but they haven't carried that copper chain in quite a while now and you know I'm on my last roll and I've been looking for other places uh, where I can get something comparable to what I had because I really loved it um, so if I come up with a place I'll let you know but right now the beadsmith doesn't have it so um, uh, I I don't know what to say on that I would just look I think they're like I think these oval links are like 11 by 7 or something in their dimension I'd have to measure them but um, you know it, it's a it was a nice chain it, it's nice chain to use as a chain but when I saw that you could just twist them open to, to uh, disconnect them and use them as jump rings it made all all the sense to me to do that so anyway um i that's what i've got lined up so uh kumi Himo next week that'll be with the stripe in it um uh, i had done one a while back uh with a just a solid so the board is set up just a little bit differently uh it's not difficult at all and um the uh, instructions are already printed uh, in the file section for that, except I will include the stripe pattern uh, that we're using on the project next week. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Um, I will see you on the group page and next week. Same time, same place. Thanks for joining me. I always enjoy... Um, having you guys with me for the ride. So take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.